All right, welcome back. Uh, so this one is all about the APIs for the digital inputs. Uh, we'll leave the, the, the a few other things to the next video. We just want to talk about the APIs for the digital inputs. So much like drive motors, uh, you're going to be creating a class. You're going to be creating an instance of a class, that's what I meant to say. Um, and you're going to be using the dot button class, uh, the dot touch sensor class, and the dot remote control uh, class. Here's the UML diagrams for these things. You can see that buttons have many instance variables uh, and only one method. Touch sensor is my favorite class. Like it's got one instance variable and no methods, right? What an awesome class. Uh, and then remote control is very similar to button. And we'll talk about each of these instance variables uh, and then also the process method uh, when we kind of get into each one. So let's go ahead and dive in. Uh, and here's all the links if you want to learn about it from the official docs. Uh, those, are, those are good things to know that you can go visit. So the first one I want to talk about is the touch sensor, just because it's so darn simple, right? It has one instance variable, no methods, uh, and that instance variable is is pressed. Uh, is pressed is a boolean. It's either true or false. Um, and when it's being pressed, it's true. And when it's not being pressed, it's false. So this one you can only use with states. There, there's no like mechanism for dealing with the events. Um, and what we're going to use it for is for the arm, right? So you're going to go up until it hits the sensor. Once it hits the sensor, uh, you know the arm's at the top. You can also use it as a button. So in the example here, um, it goes for uh, 10 seconds, essentially, uh, and it just prints out 20 messages to the screen. It either prints out that it's pressed or it's not pressed. If I was to run this program, it would say, like, not pressed, not pressed, not pressed, not pressed, not pressed. I put my finger on it and say, press, 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 press. And I'll let go and say, not pressed, not pressed, not pressed, not pressed. Uh, you can see that uh, just like before, we call the constructor. Um, unlike motors, uh, motors you always had to specify where the motor was because we had two of them. Uh, in this one, it will actually just try to figure it out if there's only one touch sensor connected. So you don't have to tell it where it's connected. You just have to say touch sensor, and it'll find it if there's only one. Uh, this assert line, I think I glossed over this last time, but asserts, uh, what they do is they say, hey, crash my code if anything's wrong. So there's a chance that it won't find a touch sensor, right? So there's a chance that you know somebody accidentally unplugged it. Um, and if it's accidentally unplugged, what this assert will do is it will crash and say, hey, I didn't find any touch sensor. And you actually want that, right? So you want the program to crash right away, and then you know what's wrong, right? It's like, hey, it's unplugged. Um, and so we do those asserts basically anytime we create an object uh, just to make sure that it found it. Sometimes I'm lazy on the buttons because I know the buttons are always there. Uh, but this is the touch sensor. Very easy to use. Uh, you will be using it as states. Uh, and that's the touch sensor. That's, that's all you really are ever going to need to know about the touch sensor. Uh, the buttons, uh, the buttons on the front here, so up, down, left, right, enter, and backspace. Um, this code right here shows how you can use them as states. Uh, so here's a loop. It runs a thousand times, right? Um, and what it does is if you're uh, not pressing anything, nothing's printed. Um, if you start pressing something, uh, it'll print that. And so like here I'm pressing uh, backspace is what I was pressing. So it would say back is pressed, back is pressed, back is pressed, back is pressed. Um, it'd say it 100 times a second, so it'd do it pretty fast, right? Um, if I press down, same deal. It starts saying uh, down is pressed, down is pressed, down is pressed. Um, if I'm not pressing anything, nothing prints in this. Um, so that's using them as states. Using them as states is easy, uh, but it's actually kind of annoying because like, um, like how many things get printed when you press right? Uh, it prints it over and over and over. Usually with buttons, uh, you're going to want to use them as events, uh, and we'll talk about that. But this slide shows how you use them as states, uh, and that's very easy in that there's a instance variable called up, down, left, right, enter, and backspace. I um, mean, it just tells you true or false. What, what's the state of this thing right now? Uh, also, you'll notice on here that I left out enter, uh, so left, right, up, down, backspace. Uh, and that's because we rarely use the enter button, and the reason for that is that by default, uh, the Brickman program, that, that's kind of like that file browser network things, it runs at the same time as your program, um, and it receives the button events too, right? So if you if you hit up down, like for your program, like if you watch Brickman, it's going up and down, it's like doing stuff, and Backspace does stuff. As long as you never hit enter though, nothing bad happens in Brickman, right? So that's why we never use enter, uh, because Brickman would also get the enter button. There's ways you can turn off Brickman, which we'll talk about later. Uh, but in general, we just don't use Enter, right? So we've got five buttons. That's plenty. 
Uh, the remote control, you can also use it as states, uh, but again, you never would. So like, you know, you're pressing it as true, you released it as false. The only thing that's different about the remote control is that there's actually an independent, oops, uh, an independent one for each channel, right? So you would actually make um, like RC1 uh, for the four buttons that are on remote control channel one. And so you could actually create four of these objects, RC1, RC2, RC3, RC4. Um, and here's an example of um, if you press red up, it prints something. Uh, and if you press red down, uh, it breaks out of the while loop. Um, and so that's that indefinite loop pattern that we've seen in class. Uh, so those are the states. Uh, those are all pretty easy. In general, though, you only use the touch sensor with states uh, because that's all it can do, right? Um, whereas the buttons and the remote control, you're going to use with events. Uh, so how do we use uh, events? The way we use events, this is just high-level summary, is we, we connect some function to this, like, on up. So on up is a function that's going to get called uh, when the up button is pressed, right? And so it's going to call that function uh, when it's pressed. It also calls it when it's released. So it calls it twice, right, for those events. In order for that magic to work, though, you have to make sure you're calling dot process um, within the while loop that you've got, right? It's kind of lame that you have to do that, to be honest, but that's how it works. So you have to be calling process, uh, and then it'll take care of calling that function uh, when an event happens. Let's look at some example code. So what this code does, let's just kind of walk through it, is there's a function, just like we're used to. This function is going to receive a state. Um, state is the state of the button, right? So it's either true uh, if that uh, just got pressed. So like the event says, hey, this is a press. Uh, it's true. And so we print out um, up or down, uh, just got pressed. If it's false, uh, that means it was a release event. Um, so the release event, uh, we're just going to print release. So that's the function. Let's look at how we wire it up. Uh, so we construct a, a button instance, right? So an instance of the button class. You should always have exactly one of these, by the way. Um, and then we, here's the magic. Um, we connect that function, um, handle up down, to the instance variable on up. And so what the system does is the system will actually call the on up function, passing in uh, a parameter of the state of the variable or the state of the button, right? So there's, uh, with the buttons, there are six of these. There's up, down, left, right, enter, backspace. Again, we almost never use enter. Um, and it actually calls that function, which is super slick. In order for the magic to work, though, you have to make sure you're calling button.process uh, in the main while loop. It's kind of lame that you have to do that. I don't know. It feels like, feels like it should magically just work. Uh, but you do have to do that for it to work. This is cool. Love it. Uh, the thing people do wrong is they accidentally, they put parentheses on right here. Um, and that that would actually, if you put parentheses on there, it would call the function. Um, that function would potentially return something here. It returns none. So if you were to put parentheses on here, uh, it would set this on up equal to none, right? Which would not what you want. Um, so just make sure with this syntax, you leave off those parentheses. Problem. The problem is uh, we can't pass additional arguments to the function. Uh, let's go ahead and look at that. So here uh, is an example that does not work. Um, here we want to pass the robot. We want to pass him to this function, right? We want to pass him in there so you can do stuff with him, manipulate him, things like that. But the problem is, is with this syntax, there's no way to pass anything in. So like this robot does not work, right? So we have a problem. Um, and the solution is to introduce some new syntax. Um, so the syntax we're going to introduce is going to look a little confusing at first, but you'll get it. Um, it's called Lambda. Uh, what Lambda is, is Lambda is what's called an inline function. So it's similar to def in a lot of ways, which I'll talk about here in a little bit. Um, but what you do is you say Lambda, which is similar to kind of like declaring a new function. You say what arguments this Lambda function receives by default. So here it's called uh, state that, that's built in, right? So when this function is called, they're going to be passing in a state. And then your lambda function, it's kind of like a def line all right here. You get one statement, right? Um, and typically with one statement, what you do is you call another function. So here we're calling with our one statement, handle up down, uh, and we can pass in as many arguments as we want. Uh, you'll notice that here we do use the parentheses. So the lambda syntax is different. Um, and so we've got this inline function. And what this inline function does is it calls another function. Um, and that allows you to have as many arguments as you want. 
If you choose, uh, you can pass in the state, uh, you can pass in other things. You don't even have to pass in state, you can pass in whatever you want. Um, so here's up and down, and you can see now it would print out like up was pressed, up was released, or down was pressed, down was released. Uh, and the robot has the opportunity to do something uh, whenever the button is pressed. Note again that process is still down here. So that's Lambda. The way we really use Lambda is we don't pass in strings like up and down very much. We pass in uh, objects. So the robot uh, is a type of object we pass in. Another thing we do a lot, which is sneaky, is we create a class. Uh, so you've created classes like points, classes, things like that. Um, typically we call this data container because it's a simple class to contain data. Data container in this example has one instance variable. That instance variable is running and is set to true by default. So here we create an instance of the data container class. Then we pass in DC. So here we're passing it into the on backspace callback. Um, and we're passing it over here. And the neat thing about objects is you can mutate their instance variables inside of a function. So here we're mutating DC and we're saying dot running is false. Um, so now it's false. Um, and so that affects everybody, right? So you're actually mutating it in that function. So here this main while loop is going to end uh, because of something that was mutated in a function call. So I think it's really neat how the skills we've learned in the rest of the class uh, work with this robot and this project um, and how you create objects and how they get mutated. I just think there's a lot of really good skills in this project, so I'm excited about it. Talking more about Lambda, there's kind of two, two ways to use Lambda. One is to pattern match. So here's the pattern, pretty simple pattern to match. Uh, two is to like keep thinking about it and really understand it. The next two slides are if you, if you choose to think about it and really understand it, that's what these slides are for. So I understand Lambda best when I compare it to DEF. So here's DEF. So DEF, you say DEF, uh, and then you say a name for this function. So it's, it's the word DEF, a space, uh, the name, then there's a parenthesis, just how the syntax works, um, and then any arguments that come in, and then a colon, right? And then your code is in here. You can have as many lines as you want uh, in a function like that. Obviously, that's very simple. I've been doing that for a, lot, a long time now. Lambda. So lambda is different. Uh, you say the word lambda instead of the word def. Um, the name of the function is not here, right? So there's no name here. It actually returns a function, so the name is on the left-hand side of the assignment, right? After the word lambda are the arguments. The arguments are not enclosed in parentheses. I'm kind of surprised they did that, by the way. I figured they'd be closed in parentheses, but they're not. Um, so probably not the syntax I would have chosen if I was doing it, but hey, Guido doesn't ask me these things, right? He just, he just makes things, right? Um, so there's lambda, and then with lambda you get one statement. Uh, you can put that statement on the same line or, or on the next line down, doesn't matter, but you get one statement. And typically what you do with that one statement is you call another function. Note in this example, um, built in uh, was X and Y, right? Those got called, right? Um, and I chose to pass over to the function just Y. I didn't need X over there, so I didn't pass it in. And then I added a few other variables that I had around. Um, so they're similar and they're different. Uh, they're different in that the name uh, is over on the left-hand side of an assignment. Uh, Lambda is only one statement long, and they do that intentionally, right? They do that so you don't get away from yourselves, right? They're meant to be simple, short, little inline things, so they limit you to one statement. Maybe they could let you have multiple statements, but they choose not to because they want to limit you to keep it short, right? Um, and then here it's shown on two lines, but usually since it's one statement, usually people just write it on a single line, and it looks like this, which looks really confusing. Interestingly, what happens under the hood um, is in this case, uh, the system calls for you button dot on up and it passes in the state of that button. Um, so that's kind of what gets called. Um, that calls your Lambda function uh, and then your Lambda function calls another function. So it's kind of this multi-step process. If you really understand Lambda, you can actually use it kind of like how we use def. Uh, these are silly examples. Uh, so here I can make a, a function with the name say hello. Um, but I do it with Lambda here, just because I can. Uh, lambda, it receives no parameters uh, in this Lambda function. And then the one statement is to actually print the word hello. So if you call the, the, the Lambda function, say hello, uh, you call it just like you would with, with a def function, it would print hello. 
say hello to is a lambda function as well. It has one argument, name, um, and it has one statement, and that statement in this case is a print statement. Uh, so it's printing hello, uh, whatever the name is, and an exclamation point. You could call it just like you would with a def made function, uh, say hello Dave, um, and it would print hello Dave. The types on these are just functions. So we've talked about ints, floats, strings, list, tuples, now we're talking about functions, right? And there, it's another type uh, that you can have, which is cool. All right, way off the deep end with Lambda. Let's come back. Uh, we were learning about buttons with events. Next thing we need to learn about is the remote control with events. The nice thing is, is they work exactly the same. So there's not gonna be a big speech about this. The only thing that's different is that they have different names. So it's red up, red down, blue up, blue down. They've got a process just like the buttons have. The other thing that's different is that you can have four of them, right? So you can create four instances of this class for channels one, two, three, and four. Otherwise, it's the exact same. So buttons and remote controls kind of complex. They can work with states, but usually you don't usually use events. And usually with those events, you use the Lambda syntax. So it gets kind of complex. Touch sensor, on the other hand, super simple. Uh, digital is pressed, true or false, uh, that's it. All right, so now you know everything you need to know about digital inputs. Uh, come back next time, and we'll talk about a few other things. All right, see you then. Bye.